All right, welcome to Teacher Seeking Teachers. We are gathering, a few of us are here, um, and the rest of us are too exhausted by the circumstances of last night, but anyway, who knows. But welcome um, to a couple of people who uh, are not our regulars. Our regulars might be showing up here in a minute. But so we'll get to know them, uh, the two of you, a little bit as we go here. Um, and I have a few things on the table I'm curious about, interested in, uh, thinking about together. But um, Janet and Diane, why don't each of you give some introduction to yourself, what you're working on, what you're thinking about. Jenna, why don't you start? Yeah. Hi, Perfect. can you hear me? Yes. And okay, you, unless you unless you have a dog barker barking in the background, you don't have to mute ever. You can just leave it on. Oh, no, I have uh, noisy children, so. <laughs> oh, okay. That's good, too. Whatever you <laughs> think. Okay. Uh, so I'm Jenna Carraro. Um, I, do you want me to give like the whole spiel, like what I do? And yeah, why not? Let's get to know you a little bit here. Yeah. Okay. And, so, and Rollin, uh, Rollin, who we're trying to introduce you to is, you know, frantically in a car trying to come back um, and she can watch this later. So there oh, perfect. You. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So um, I am a full-time instructional designer at Drew. Um, I'm also mainly an asynchronous instructor. I play formerly on JIT at Drew as well. Um, I actually, uh, I have been running the Marlboro Board of Education. Uh, so last night was my night and I was elected onto the board. Um, so that oh might be experience campaigning. Oh, it was wild. Um, so yeah, so talk about like the exhaustion. I'm feeling it today. Uh, but wait, so and you I'm, got elected. Yeah. Yes, I did. Yeah, onto the board. So how big is the how it's a county or what is it? Oh no, so how it's um Marlboro the... Township. Okay. Yeah, so there's like nine of us. Um but yeah, going through introduced me to a whole new side of education that I really never paid attention to. Uh, so mm. it's really, it's been really interesting. Um, but some of the things that I've been working on, hi, um, some of the things that I've been working on uh, uh, is that I am working on a memoir for my doctoral program. And I actually started using writing partners um, to create something to give me feedback. So um, on my writing, how to improve it. Um, I am neurodivergent. So it's really hard for me to like articulate certain thoughts or can have. Um, and I found writing partners was really kind of the springboard into um, being able to write like my, my memoir um, that I started as vignettes. And I wanted to try to tweak them to be for different audiences, like people with ADHD, or just like, you know, having, um, changing the point of view of my writing, um, to add metaphors, because I'm actually very bad at <laughs> metaphorical language. Um, so just like all these different things that I thought of that would help my writing, um, and capture an audience of all different varieties. Um, so that's really mm -hmm. what I've been working on, especially using writing partners and other um, generative AI. Really cool that you're using it yourself to kind of figure things out. Um, yeah, because uh, um, you haven't really used it with students yet, have you? Oh, it actually um, takes a lot okay. of time to like incorporate it and like using it in an ethical way. Um, so I'm starting mm -hmm. to redesign my courses to implement it because I think it's really important that they learn how to use it um, effectively. Cool, cool. Um, Bonnie, welcome. Uh, wait, you're say, do you, you can just say that, Bonnie. You're leaving? <laughs> say hello. Hi, everybody. Yes, I'm going to leave. I, didn't, I just wanted to make sure Paul was not by himself. So I came in today because um, today is not the day of me talking about any academics or anything like that. Um, so. But, I, we, but I mean, do you mind telling us more about what it's been like for you and with your students? Is that too much? To ask you or not really not really not really you don't want to do that huh? no, um, okay. well my students um today 
uh, because we've been doing a lot of work in um, the election. I, I, let me jump in and say Bonnie teaches at um, SLA at Beaver in West Philadelphia mm -hmm. and has been very involved in um, Kamala's campaign. But, yes. Okay. Thank yes, you. So I'm highly political as a person and as a community member. I am, I'm an elected. Um, on my political party state committee, and I guess I'll just say the Democratic State Committee. Um, so I've done a lot, and I'm also a member of the Divine Nine. I'm a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, um, and uh, have just done a huge amount of work for Kamala Harris's campaign and Tim Walls, um, so much so that my day-to-day -day work suffered um, and then to be, um, I felt it this morning. I, I woke up out of my sleep at four o'clock this morning uh, with a terrible belly ache. And, uh, and about six o'clock, 5.30 or six o'clock, it came through that um, yeah. they had called it. Um, and so I was like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. And you know, Paul, I have to say thank you because he um, thought about, um, you know, me and my students, because we have been working in the election. Um, and, and the students didn't know who I was for, but you know, you see who I look like, right? So they <laughs> assumed. Um, but today I really didn't even want to talk. Um, so, um, yeah. I, what am I going to do? And so I used writing partners um, and I started writing a letter to them. Um, and then I asked them to write letters to and they could make a decision on who they wanted to write to. It didn't matter. Um, but they have a I, lot. I like one of your students who wrote to his future self, which I thought was interesting. Yes, yes. And another one wrote, about being a first time voter and not really knowing what to expect, what would happen, you know, what to do and how to feel. Um, so, you know, I, I told the young people I just did all, I did all this work, not just for me, but for them. Um, so they they learned a lot though they learned a lot um yeah. now soon paul i will take them through the demographics the statistics of the demographics of voting and how that looks and and i have i teach the world everybody my students come from all over the world so i have students who are also undocumented in my classroom um, and, 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 and it, and it, it doesn't feel good to them at this initial stat status. So we, we shall see, but you know, <laughs> it, yeah. Now, and this, this is what I did say to them. Um, I said, now I can come from being a shy person in, in, in spelling America with three Ks instead of using a C. That, um, because that reality showed itself yesterday. Hmm. Yeah, so just to quickly fill in some of, just some of the, the, the work that we've been doing together, um, you know, a lot, I'm, I, I think all of your students jumped in and watched both debates and yes. annotated them um, on writing partners. Yeah, so the um, first debate, it was 1,100 comments after the first debate. That was the presidential debate. 1,100 comments, and they stayed on the entire debate. And I didn't give them a time frame or anything. They watched. And then for the vice presidential debate, they had... 3,500 comments the first time. Mm. And, and not only were they using their own comments, they were using the fact checkers. The, and they were, you know, you, it, they were just all over the place. And it was so crazy. I, and I, 
at the same time was having in-person watch parties um, <laughs> in my community. So I was good and crazy during that time. So now I don't have to be so crazy. And, you know, I can kind of have a, almost, almost a one-track mind. And th the, th the thing, Bonnie, that I've been thinking, like we're, we're in the midst of planning for a, a presentation at NCTE mm -hmm. um, that, that Jess Early is doing with us and Tanya mm -hmm. um, Baker is doing with us as well. Um, and, and so, and we had thought, I had thought, <laughs> you, you and I have, are doing so much, but I, that we would present some of this work. I don't know how I feel about that now, right? Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. But maybe still, you know, I don't know. Maybe the letters, um, because mm -hmm. people, you know, children's voices aren't heard in adult business. But mm -hmm. this adult business affects children. Um, so maybe maybe for the letters. And, and that was impromptu, um, because we're always trying to... Um, help with the development and design of AI to make it inclusive um, of all people and not just some, which we know a lot of um, technology, nor, quote unquote, normally, whatever normal is, um, does. It eliminates a large swath of people living in this country and other countries. So. So I was All going right. to leave. So I, to I know. So I told you, you have total permission, as always, to do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. But but um, thank you for sharing that much. Um, mm -hmm. And Diane didn't even get a chance to introduce herself. So maybe you could I do that. And, and let mm -hmm. me just, Aditya, can you hear us yet? Yes, good. Okay. Hey, Aditya. Aditya, can you hear us? Oh, we can't hear him. Aditya is a ninth grader who's been working um, with uh, teacher Jill Sadrowski in um, New Jersey since he was in eighth grade. So I'm going to try and fix it. Okay. Anyway, he's having sound problems. Um, anyway, Diane, tell us what you're thinking. <laughs> uh, or I'm... introduce yourself a little bit first. Yes. Thank you. Well, I'm first. Hi. Of... Um... Oh, wait. Uh... Yes. Go for it. Yeah, I got my uh, stuff back working. Uh, working. Yeah. I'll go. Wait, we heard you. Hello, and then you yeah. muted. Yeah, I got my Hello. stuff back online. It was just my headphones were get, causing a, some issues, so I just disconnected them. Keep oh. talking. Introduce yourself, Aditya. Yeah, Tell us so, what um, you're my name's uh, Aditya. I'm a freshman at Ridge High School in uh, New Jersey. Um. Uh, yeah. So I, I just started high school. Go ahead, Aditya. <laughs> it's been a while. Uh, I think well, it's been a couple of weeks because um, yeah, you're I, on the debate. Yeah, ahead. I joined the debate team. Uh, well, you made it. Yeah. Congratulations. Thanks. You're welcome. Congratulations, DTO. So, yeah. have you been following the election at all? And oh uh, yeah, yeah, it? yeah. That was a big thing. I mean, especially like uh, among debaters, especially. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, I was following the election last night, you know, just going along, checking in every couple of minutes. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, we have a first debate tournament this weekend in New York. Mm. Cool. So, yeah. We can see you now. Good. Mm -hmm. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> so, thank you for stopping in. Um, yeah. Diane, now you can introduce yourself. <laughs> Well, first, I want to um, congratulate Aditya and um, Jenna. J Jenna's going to be a school board member. And Aditya, good for you for being on the debate team. That is so cool. And Thanks. I want I want to thank Bonnie for her tremendous amount of work. Um, the whole thing was heartbreaking, but the investment people put in equals the pain they feel tonight, I think. And she, Bonnie, you put in a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Diane. Um, I'm um, 
an old woman <laughs> who's been through a lot of stuff. Um, uh, was a high school English teacher for 20 years and then got a doctorate late in life and did 20 years at the university level. And the writing project has always been one of my um, beacons in the darkness. I've, Ann Lieberman and I wrote a book about the writing project in 2003 called Inside the Writing Project. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I've been working on a sequel since, God, for too long now. And COVID came and craziness. And so I'm still working on it. And I, I like to attend things so I understand what's going on that's new and exciting. Um, but frankly, tonight I'm pretty devastated um, and very worried. And one of the things that I believe about the writing project is that it's a, um, a little enclave of people actually doing democracy mm. um, instead of talking about it and preaching about it. They just sort of do it. Um, which is deeply touching to me. I've seen the writing project go through being all white women, few white men, to having lots of faces of color, which has enriched it and made it so much stronger and wiser. Um, and I like the fact there aren't hierarchies that people just come to authentically to each other. Um, you know, everybody is a person no one's better than anyone else all our perspectives matter I just I'm very touched by it and I want to keep cont in contact with it because I feel so sad about our country wow Diane I, oh, oh, I'll come back at you because I just finished my doctoral program in May 2024 and I am old too. And it's just, it's like a third <laughs> life professional lane for me that mm -hmm. I'm looking to explore. Um, but I owe my- Congratulations that you got you. Thank you. And I heard you, Jenna, go on girl, keep it up until you get to the prize. Cause it's- <laughs> Fighting the good fight. <laughs> that's right, that's right. So Jenny, can can you? Sorry if I could jump in on that. Um, can you explain a little bit? You're writing your dissertation as a memoir or something like that. Yeah. At Drew in this program, you can do a something they call a creative dissertation. So some people hmm. do like artwork and. And, you know, mixed like poetry and other media like uh, type of things. I chose to do, um, you could do a memoir, like write a nonfiction book or fiction, whatever book you want to write. And then that would also count as a dissertation. So that's what I plan on doing um, in memoir. Hmm. Cool. So, and, and as soon as Rollin gets here, she can explain this. Um, Fred, hello. Oh, hi, Fred. <laughs> Fat Fred. Hi. <laughs> First name I didn't I didn't realize. How are you feeling today, Fred? Let's just check in. You jumped um, in here. But I, that's what you get for jumping in here. <laughs> oh, um, I welcome. Thanks. Um, I don't know. Kind of hard to. You got to introduce yourself a little more. Oh I yeah, sorry. You. Um, my name's Fred Haas. I am actually a uh, high school. English and journalism teacher in the Boston suburbs and um, affiliated with the Boston Writing Project. Mm -hmm. So how, how am I feeling? Um, not great. <laughs> not great. Um, <clears throat> hard to probably articulate. Sort yeah, of, that's, what, that's what's weird. It's hard to find words. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. Empty. Empty maybe is the best word I can think of. But. Mm -hmm. And the only positive I can find is things like Jenna's story, to which you got here late to be, is like what's happening locally seems to be really interesting, right? But Jenna's just got on the school board oh. in her township. So congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so. Hi. Sorry, Paul. <laughs> no, what? Go ahead. What? You, you no, were talking, it, wasn't, you were, 
it was an ugly fight to get there. Or the campaigning was like they talk about smear tactics and um it was all like extreme right wing, like Moms for Liberty, NJ Project. Um, no, this is it, a school yeah. board election. <laughs> it's wild. And I mean, I think a lot of it came from Steve Bannon when he said, like, you know, basically to infiltrate at the local level in order to and I looked I was not paying attention and the majority on the board were these like very conserve like extreme conservative um people that wanted to like, you know, censor uh, books and all of that stuff. So yes, yeah, so we actually now me and another person and that I was running with, we have, we're flipping the majority. Now we have the majority. So it was a pretty cool win yeah. last night. It, that story comes from Blue, New Jersey, right? <laughs> Just saying. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations, Jenna. Thank we, you. Yeah, we need people like you on school boards. Amen. Thank you. I'll do my best. Mm -hmm. I just I pulled a couple of things together. I can show you what's on the table. And then when um, maybe we can have a further discussion about vignettes. Um, but you could start that, Jenna, for us before I go off on the latest thing I've been thinking about. Tell, tell me more about why vignettes are appropriate for neurodiverse students to be writing. Or not appropriate, but even helpful. But yeah, so I thought they were like just for the types of struggles um, that I know that I have had, and also like my son has ADHD, um, and you know the attention span, the the comprehension of certain things, a wall of text like completely glazes me over, and I freeze. And I used to be a very like avid reader before I started having some of these like medical issues. Um, so it really, the vignettes, I like the idea of being able to enter a story at any point and having like an encapsulated um, something experience in that story for someone to read without it having to constantly like kind of remember certain things as you, you know, navigate a text, like a longer text. So I just thought it would be an interesting way to approach memoir, but in more of like snippets rather than one, you know, continuous story. Right. And I keep talking for Rollin, <laughs> if I may. She has her students write, she keeps telling me 12 to 15 their ninth graders vignettes through the whole year, right? And they collect them, they put them up, they publish them kind of thing. And she's really interested to use AI to kind of support that process. Um, some of her notion is that they would explore certain literary elements when they do their writing. Um, they, they just finished essays uh, about um, Cicero's book, um, and and they're they're jumping into um, the poet X next. Um, so that's sort of that's sort of what they're they're working on. So when I heard what you're working on, and I heard what she's working on, you two need to get together, and maybe we can work together. So thank yeah. you. Yeah. So yeah. Um. Aditya, can you tell me a little more about what's going on in ninth grade? You guys, in eighth grade, you had a teacher who was like allowing you to immerse yourself in AI. In ninth grade, are you allowed to use it? Find so, a way to use it? yeah, what's it like? I think it's definitely very much different. So, like for example, let's take um, I think some we had some current sophomores on the call a while back. We're talking about the teachers in ninth grade, and I generally would agree with some of their sentiments. Like uh, they're like for example, I think that social studies teacher does not like like my social studies teacher does not like AI whatsoever. Um, some other teachers don't really have a, a stance on it aside from like don't write your entire essay with ChatGPT and then just turn that in without like any of your own thoughts. Yeah. Um. My um some of my like debate coaches and stuff they're like open to the technology but like the thing with debate is that the way that the current systems work for most, so it's like basically in middle school, everyone does the same event, right? Um, 
like a three on three style. Uh, in high school, we all do different events. So certain events are very much where you could use AI, but then there's other ones like the ones I do, um, which are very much which aren't really as easy to utilize AI because of the way they have to prep for them. Um, so yeah, it, it's just all kind of all over the place right now. Still trying to like figure it out, just generally. Oh, cool. So let me just throw an idea out there and see what uh, conversation happens. Um, on the table, there are two things. One is, um, and so these are just ways of thinking about AI that um, that hopefully move away from this sort of AI is one thing and it's chat GPT, right? <laughs> um, and um, so thinking if you, the first thing, and if I click on it, uh, can you see that or not? Or should I share screen? Hold on. Can you see the document I just, I can't see you when I ask that. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's hilarious. Okay, I'm gonna close it. No, it says like you need. I need access. Oh, really? Yeah. Right. So I'll share screen. It'll take a minute. So Fred, what's going on with you? How are you? As I'm getting going here. <laughs> are you well. playing with AI at all, or? Okay. I did a little bit. There was like a tool that I rolled out with some journalism kids, but it was hmm. a more specific. You're it was muted. more, I, yeah, it was more specific tool designed by um, some people at the University of Oregon. Mm -hmm. but that's about it. Cool. I have a lot of ambivalence about AI. So. Yeah. So, Which you probably have gathered over like time. Yeah. Well, so yeah, so you're a good audience for this question then, <laughs> if I may say that. Anyway, am I sharing screen now? Mm -hmm. this is an example. Am I sharing my screen? Yes. Yep. I am. Okay. Sorry. I can't tell what's going on. Okay. So if you kind of see that this is this is actually one of Bonnie's students. This was a, a review of a movie she wrote, she read. What they, she, Bonnie took the students to this movie. Um, and over here, there is an example of using AI for guidance and then using AI for completion. So that's one sort of broad category that is worth starting to think about. So that AI can be used, so you, you we can go in and say, can you suggest paragraph breaks for me? And um, right, so there's no paragraph here. So the AI just gave her the paragraph breaks, right? And said, okay, here they are. So that's AI for completion, and that's sort of how it's often used. But using AI for guidance, and Jenna, there were some things that the, it drew authorship, you know, is another way to think about this, but um, using AI for guidance, the um, the AI says, "Hey, your story is is strong with distinct uh, moments of emotional tension. Consider breaking the paragraph into sections. <clears throat> Start with an initial scene, right? And it goes through. If you can read us here, right? I don't want to read it to you. You can see it. So it makes some suggestions." for how the student might go ahead and do that change. So quick thoughts around, uh, do you think these, this is a useful, would be a useful sort of distinction to make with students in talking about how to use AI? Um, yeah, like, I, I mean, I think the suggestions I mean, I, I don't have a, as big of a problem with the suggestions. I guess my issue is that it, it, it'll do the completion for you. Right. But if, if students are aware that, um, that you don't want them to use AI that way, um, and you give them tools that 
that don't do that, right? So in writing partners, there are, if, if somebody creates a writing partner that is a completion tool, we revise it, right? So in writing partners, you can't do completion AI, right? So our tools are designed for guidance, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I mean, I well, I think that's fine. I, I don't have I have far less of a problem with that kind of thing. I mean, my I guess the one issue is it's like it's just one tool, right? And then like if you know that you can do the, you can do the completion with another tool. Like I, that's it. I don't know. It just sort of Pandora's box to me a little bit. Right. But what, what I would suggest is that students don't know that the other tools exist as much. Right. And don't know how to use them. And the guidance tools actually like, let me just say this. I, as a writer, couldn't don't, can't imagine writing anymore without the guidance tools, right? Like AI is part of my writing process. Um, so, and to some degree, that's probably true with your students too, but, but to the degree that they're using them for completion and not for not using guidance tools, they're not necessarily growing as writers, is what I would argue or think about at least. I know. I mean, I, I would agree with that. I, I mean, that that mm -hmm. seems like a reasonable statement that all, but, it, you know, part of it presupposes that I, I don't know. I mean, I, <clears throat> I kind of talk myself in circles because I would say that there's in on one level, it presupposes that they actually want to get better at it. Which I would say the temp like the problem, I guess one of the problems is the temptation to find tools for the, like to do the completion part is just really, really powerful. And especially if it's something you're not particularly like that crazy about, or you don't want to necessarily do. And unfortunately, I would say that a, a big part of teaching sadly is kind of maintaining a, um, a sequence of events that may not be as desirable. <laughs> Jenna, you you uh, you you're bouncing around there, but I you you took your your mute off at one point. Did you want to say something? Yeah. So I mean, myself like um, had an assignment, and I actually um, I have done the assignment. I think during like a workshop um, where you can forcing students to look at the completion aspect of <coughs> even for myself, the completion aspect of AI is really helpful for as a reflection tool of their own writing, right? Like why did they decide to take the suggestion of AI? For, and like you would like link to, they would, they can link with the chat um, or the comments on writing partners or even in like chat GPT, right? Um, they can link to it so you can kind of see the prompts that it's asking. Um, so it helps mm -hmm. with that like inquiry piece and also the reflection of the response that they got. Um, that's something I find is like not only useful for me, just like when I use it, but also for students to, it kind of balances, like they get to see like a mentor text, right? Like something that might not look as bad or whatever, then, um, and then they can apply mm -hmm. some of those, uh, those strategies to their own writing. Um, and then, you know, justify why they chose, you know, chat GPT sentence structure over their own or something like that. Um, I find are useful activities for them to think about. Yeah, so you're pointing out that completion's not good or not bad and guidance isn't right. Yeah, you can it depends on how it's used. Fair enough. And if you if you if you um, hit on the article there, but I'll just describe it briefly. the the other the other metaphor that um, we're messing with here is is this spectrum between um, between steroids, sneakers, and coach, right? And the the argument that these writers are making, or argument, the presentation that they're making here is that um, some AI tools are like steroids. They let you finish something, it's completed, it's great, um, but it doesn't help you think, it doesn't help you be creative, 
right? Um, and so we need to design tools, especially in schools, that are not steroids because we don't want kids to have, we don't want students to get the quick benefit and then suffer afterwards, right? The, the second one is like a good sneaker that will make you run faster. Um, those are probably more useful tools. And then the, the third kind that we wanna to move toward are coaching tools. Tools that use AI to help you think, to help you um, reconsider your writing, to, to you know, be there for you as a coach, right? And if you click on that, you can see their argument there. And like Jenna did with the first one, <laughs> They then take it apart and say, hey, you know, some things start as steroids and end up as coaches. And, you know, these these categories don't necessarily hold. But I think that it, it would be a useful sort of design consideration, but also something to talk to students about. Like, are you using AI like a steroid or and how can you start to use it more like a coach to help you think, to help you be a critical writer? Right. Any thoughts? I, Aditya, what? Yeah, go ahead, Jenna. I, I'm or, just, sorry, Diane. Something. I have to say, I just got a text that I noticed from my granddaughter. Um, I oh, need you got to it. Up, yeah. And I'm so okay. sorry, but no. She, thank you for stopping by. <laughs> I really, I enjoyed it. Thank you. All right. We're here all the time, <laughs> every Wednesday. Come on back. Thank you. Good, good. Aditya, what do you think about those that metaphor? I mean, I can kind of see, like, see myself, like, the way I use AI in this. Like, I try to avoid the steroids, right? And then when I first started, I, I was doing stuff, like, with that, uh, the argument generator stuff. That mm -hmm. stuff, um, that was more like a sneaker. And then when I started moving on to, like, the uh, rebuttals. And Why was it more like, like a sneaker? Say, say, say more. Because yeah. basically what it's doing is it's basically giving me, like, a head start on my research so I can focus on finding data and statistics instead of focusing on what my argument itself is going to be. And then like when I started moving on to like the other stuff, like the, um, I think what I want to take this in the future is like acting as kind of an opponent. I think I, I think I actually made one for that. Like where it's like uh, acting almost sort of like um, another, it's, it's acting like a, um, it's just trying to like find uh, flaws in your arguments, find holes in your arguments. From a different point of view than your own. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. Jenna, Rollin hasn't shown up yet, but sorry. She's a hardworking teacher. We'll, we'll connect somehow. So I just brought those two ideas to help us think through this a little bit. Um, the uh, Jenna, you have any further thoughts about what you're up to, or, or I always how, how do. You like these metaphors, yeah. yeah. Um, so it actually, I think, something that was super powerful for me when I was like got back into writing. So like when I started my master's um, in 2021, and I took the teacher as writers course at Drew University, where I'm at now. Um, it really helped me it was really powerful about inquiry right asking what questions should we be asking a prompt engineering course um on coursera.org uh, it was a massive yeah, open online cool. and it was absolutely excellent and it makes you approach how you're prompting or how you're like yeah how you're with the, with generative ai in such a different way like um so that was something that kind of got me started in writing partners. And I also experimented with like Claude and ChatGPT and some other, you know, Gemini. Um, and they all give you, I even like to look at like, like the different types of answers that you get from these different um, platforms to is also mm -hmm. interesting. Like I kind of pick like what metaphors I like or whatever. Um, but the prompting, the prompt engineering, that inquiry piece, I find is really powerful just in general for like thinking and like 
making that progress that we're talking about rather than just doing it for completion. That was just something that I experienced even in my own journey, like asking the right questions and getting that that closer to that output that you're looking for, like in my voice or um, like it, like updating the memory of what, how it knows you. Those are all other interesting interactions you can have that I find like deters from just going for completion, right? Like what questions are mm -hmm. you asking? Um, so that was just something I wanted to add. No, that's great. Uh, thank you. And, and we will have to, Learn more from you for, about the prompt engineering stuff. Yeah, Rowan, thank you for. Hey. I've been saying I've been saying all night that you're racing here from, from <laughs> high school, so I appreciate yeah. it. Explain a little bit. Um, uh, Jenna is here, but and and you know we're getting sort of toward the end, but uh, and you know. So, Rowan, how are you? First of all. Um, with yeah, just rushing home. It was uh, it was busy out there. Okay, so you have ninth graders, and I explain the vignette project that you do with them. Okay, so I started with the vignettes uh, two years ago with my ninth graders, and then I just liked how I I felt that the literary devices that we study are immediately applied. So there's like a direct application of whatever we were learning in the classroom. And so the focus, first off, when, when we read one book and then I would use certain things that we, they see, for example, if we learn juxtaposition, then they will have to use juxtaposition in their, in their next vignette. Then or they would learn dialogues or apply humor. So that's the that was my idea in the beginning, just a direct application of the literary devices. And then mm -hmm. it just developed, it grew into like they, they have their own story. And I think, did you share the samples that I have? I did not. My students. Um, and it, I just so beautiful that um, I think, you know, it's something that it should be captured that they, will use that even for their grandchildren someday. You know, the stories that they kept and carry um, is, are just amazing. So for this year, uh, this year's mm -hmm. ninth graders, I plan to use writing partners because I can't keep up with, there's just so many papers to read. I have, you know, and so they, I want them to correct their own writing and use the partners to maybe check the tone or, you know, get feedback from a dear reader and see how they can improve. Because I was just, I was just learning how their, their revisions were so powerful. And the student even said uh, that, you know, I'm glad I, I had writing partners. My my essay would have been boring. So. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, Jenna, one of the, um, <laughs> one of the things that would be amazing is if the three of us, uh, you, or just you, you and Rowling could get together and say, okay, here's a, um, a literary device that we want to do some prompt engineering around, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, that would you like you could come together and say create a writing partner that checks for that literary device and gives some suggestions or thoughts. Does that make mm -hmm. some sense? That would be awesome. But you see, each piece that they're writing has a certain literary focus, so it's. Is that a partner that would be, you know, encompassing all the the literary devices? Because there, that would be a lot. That's a decision you could make. Um, but my feeling is keep it small. But I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jenna, did you have a thought? You're muted, by the way, if you're talking. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, okay. No. So I was thinking what I and what would happen, right? If you made that writing partner be able to just identify what's there and help improve upon like make it like vague enough where it's like okay what literary device 
devices are listed are in this vignette, right? And then um I was going somewhere with the second part of that prompt, but um like add like add in um maybe a particular one that you're actually no. I forgot what I was going to say in the second one, but to keep it broad where it can identify it and then, oh, and then just improve upon it. So they'll know if the vignette is missing the juxtaposition or whatever and be able to identify what is there, which might be in another interesting aspect to look at too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just give advice as to whether this juxtaposition is not so realistic or something. Yeah, because um, Paul, can't you have like a conversation yes. after you apply the writing partner? Can't you have, have like a conversation there or no? Yes. So if you design it that way. Okay. So that's part, that's part of the prompting. You, you would have, I mean, it's, I, I'll say this to you quickly, but you can see some examples, but the, um, you would just say, hey, you know, make a really long, complete answer. <laughs> but, but like you mentioned earlier, you know, a whole thing of text doesn't help. And then say, just give me the first part of it and, and wait for me to ask for more. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you give it that kind of prompt, then yes, you can you can have the conversation continue is that what yeah. you, that is what you're asking right yeah. and uh, yeah i noticed that that you have to really engage i was telling my students that you really have to engage the partner in a dialogue to get more out of it because otherwise it will just stop at one and it doesn't really even if it doesn't give you the answer you have to probe and see and ask questions So, Jenna, are, you're actually teaching classes. Are you um, as well, right? Are Are you having any of your students do vignettes? And can there be like, if you're both, <laughs> is there is there any way that your students and Rollins students could see each other's stuff at some point? Does that make any sense? I'm just throwing out uh, ideas, but. Yeah. That's actually really like cool. So I don't have my students do uh, right now. I have one and <laughs> I have one composition course and they don't do like necessary. I guess it is a type of vignette. They have to write like a personal narrative sort of piece. Um, so that is something mm -hmm. I can see, you know, and then having them improve it using AI and kind of dipping my feet in that way because I haven't, you know, done that just yet. But that might be cool. Um, and I also have other fellow writers in my program that are writing like vignette based memoirs too. Um, I could see if anyone's interested in uh, interested in trying it as well. Hmm. Roland, you see, your students at this point have six of them done. Is that right? Yes, I. They have it's a memoir style vignettes. So this is what happened to them because we're reading um, the house on Mango Street, and um, so they base it. I always go back and say, "Did you say it like it's your story? Like you know, you are living it, and you were there, or something." And then they have six already done and i want to plug them in in writing partners one by one this marking period and then see how they can compile that into you want to plug the, the six that they've already made yeah, one at a time yes uh-huh and so you know, write an e i mean you know i will support everything you want to do but i want to push back a little bit and say why do you need ai because the way they appreciated the revisions that they made for their essay, I think, you know, they can see the changes in in their writing. And I think it's a good it's a good research to see what is it that, you know, consistently, if you have like six, what is it in there that you did wrong or how was it helpful for you? Hmm. Thank you. 
Yeah, yeah. I want. I, I, I I'm, I'm gonna run out of questions here first, but in a second. But one of the things I've been thinking about is, I don't know what your actual dissertation work is about, but having access to these students and they're working, does that help you think through a question or an issue or, or am, am I hoping for too much <laughs> connection there? I'm, I'm trying to think. So like my stuff, mm -hmm. I mean, and so be age dependent. So like the things that I'm writing about are definitely like certain very sensitive subjects um i've you know used ai to like help me add humor or, like lighten up this type of episode or whatever right um i'm mm -hmm. wondering if there's a way with like feedback for like students right because everyone reads and interprets differently has different things make sense to some that don't that the others don't see connections with so like it would be interesting to share like certain vignettes with them to see how their feedback kind of compares with the feedback that I get from others. But like, I don't know if that's really what you're referring to. I'm just kind of tossing things yeah, out. So, uh, yeah. Let me just, uh, I, I mean, so, a couple of the ones you have on writing partners already, like look at uh, ninth graders in a public school. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I'm a little nervous about some of them or some of the content and looks like you're disappearing. That was an, awkward moment for you to just <laughs> wait are you still there it's okay we've had this conversation we'll have it again maybe she can come back okay um so fred what do you think are we all just kind of how do you how yeah what do you what have you been thinking about all this as you hear us chatting about planning this kind of thing um i i don't know i mean I'm, I, so... Whoop, you've muted you're muted sorry yeah sorry i okay. i keep touching something with my elbow i think um i always um i'm always kind of interested to see like what it is that you're doing and think about it i i'm mm -hmm. i don't know that i'm like sold i guess part of my problem on some level is i just i feel like the point of writing is for another human being to like read it and so having this kind of like faux conversation with a computer doesn't I don't know that it's a, I mean, I, I can see how some of the guidance and some of the feedback like is helpful just from a efficiency standpoint. Right. Cause like I, you, you can't have a one-on-one -on -one conversation about every single thing with a student or whatever. Um, I, so I get that bit, but I, I don't um, like, could I just, let me just push that a second though. Yeah. Um, I like, I, I never talk about this stuff as an efficiency thing though. I mean, the AI companies do. I I actually think it um, it it uh, makes things more complicated and takes more time and makes you think harder. <laughs> so, it yeah. I I mean that like I don't have enough experience to really say that. I guess mm -hmm. it my my sort of all my default though is like ultimately i want human beings to read this right right like i'm going to write it i want it to be read by a human being not a computer and um i can see how like you can write the the bot in a way to provide certain kinds of feedback and i can see how that would be useful like that's not lost on me yeah. um as part of the process i guess but i i don't know it's there's something that still feels sort of false about it to me but you know just to um from my point of i was skeptical in the beginning too but when i saw my students working i mean if you present like when i 
the way I did it is they already wrote their essays and they just plugged it in for feedback and they I could see all the revisions that they did and it's just you know placing things I think it teaches the, the student the way that you know things could be and that they never thought before and I thought that it was very helpful because I'm not there and it's like an independent way of finding their own writing so I mean, I, I thought it's, um, it's very helpful for them. Jenna's going in and out again. Oh, Jenna, I, I wanted to mention that one of the things that both Bonnie, who was here earlier, and, um, and Roland have noticed is that the students who, um, I don't know how they get categorized, but the students who have IEPs and right or the neurodiverse students are taking to this um, more than like the the uh, than some of the other students are, right? And and we we're wondering why that's true, and we're kind of looking and trying to ask them why they're taking to it. Um, but you're going out <laughs> in and out, and we'll have to catch up with you. Oh, they, maybe you're back. Wait for a second here. Yeah. Now, we'll just say that's a question that we're exploring. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. All right. Um, well, <clears throat> yeah. We can Roland, we can talk another time. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. So, um, Roland, it's okay if I share some of those. The, the ones you sent me with yes um, Jenna I, I have we'll... permission to share them so it's okay 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 cool um and we'll have to figure out what we want to do with the six and how we think about the AI looking at them now each mm. of them has a um focus has a has a literary element yeah, focus that, yes. that they, it's called a focus okay mm -hmm. all right yeah so you have to share that with us sometime um, maybe we'll fast, like spotlight you and you can like show us all that sometime <laughs> when you get it, when we get a time. Um, okay. But thank you for stopping by. Thank tonight. you. Appreciate it. Appreciate right, it. Sorry. Yeah. I was, uh, no, thanks. that's cool. And Fred, good to see you. <laughs> all right, Fred. The, Jenna, the, student, can... the student of yours who went to Harvard, um, what's her name again? Um, City. City. Yeah. I've, I've had some back and forth with her because there was like a, a Crimson review thing that was saying that all professors are requiring AI in all their classes. And she's like, well, it's not quite like that. But yeah, it's really interesting that at Harvard, they're, they're like, that's, um, it, it, professors are expected to integrate AI into their, into their teaching, right? So yeah, that yeah. doesn't shock me. But, <laughs> I, but like, again, I'm still I, like not a hundred. I'm not, I'm just not sold yet. I, you know, I, but no, you know what? I, but it's not about, yeah. Okay. I, I understand what you're saying. <laughs> but right. It's, it's about experience, I think, more than anything. Mm -hmm. Like, like, do you remember before when we moved to writing on computers, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and there was a lot of controversy, and there still is, about, you know, is writing on computers okay or writing on paper okay? But it's become sort of natural. Um, and my worry is, so I think that's going to happen with AI. Everybody's going to be using AI. It's just going to be part of the process. But if it's a part of the process that's, that's steroids and fake writing, I don't want that. Right, but if it's it's moving more towards sneakers and coaching, um, I can see that as actually enhancing and pushing and making our writing deeper and and more rich. So I would say it's improved my writing process. Right. So anyway, it's not made it more efficient. It's made it. Yeah. <clears throat> well, it's made it, it. Yeah. Efficient might have been. I mean. Yeah. I was really only using that word with regards to. 
I can't meet one on one with every single kid at the same time, right? Um, and so I get that. Yeah. In that sense, the the bot can provide certain kinds of feedback that I would probably say to a student, but I don't have the like as much. I don't have enough minutes in the day to to do that when they would want it, right? Or like with the expedience that they would want it. Yeah. So that was really what my efficiency, I, cause you know, I'm efficiency. I'm not a very, I'm not a huge corporate type, like, you know, person. I like efficiency is no yeah. word I typically use in school. <laughs> I, yeah. So the, um, yeah, let me just say that I, I would love what I think teachers need to would be, we need to give teachers space to do is have the experiences themselves, right? Mm -hmm become become an ai writer um and then see and then you you'll kind of sort of see oh this is what kids could do right but yeah so thank you for stopping by and jenna we see that you <laughs> can't get on again thank you we'll talk to you all soon all right you bet. bye yep. all right. Good, night. good night bye, bye.